that one does, least expensive target selection, it will use the AD site costs. Does that add a cost of 10? Um, that add a cost of 50? It will use the AD site cost to work out what's the cheapest way for me to get to the content and redirect me to it. Uh, another mode is to not use those site costings because it gets more complex and essentially it will redirect you to a copy of the data in your local site. And if there isn't one in your local site, it will just randomly select one. Um, and then there's an insight only option. So essentially, if there's not a copy in my location, it won't give me any access to the data at all. Uh, generally, that's not, not used too much unless you've got very big concerns over the wide area network bandwidth usage. Um, and that's really all DFS is doing. I'm creating a logical namespace that has targets to actual shares on file servers. And these can pretty much be any UNC share. And the great thing is I'm abstracting out the data from where it's stored. So think of a migration scenario. Imagine today, I want to decommission this file server and move all the data to this guy. Well, it's a huge amount of work to update um, locations in data files, um, to update drive mappings and scripts, educating users that, hey, now instead of server one, it's server two. Well, if I've been using DFS, the users should access slash savletech.net slash data slash share one. If I want to move that data to another server, I copy over and I update the link to instead of pointing here, uh, I point it there instead. It's that simple. So DFS can be very good for migration scenarios. And what you'll see sometimes is I can even link to non-Windows boxes. Uh, let's say I'm doing a novel file migration. As long as I've got a, a gateway to convert the communication, I could actually initially set up DFS to point to the netware server, take my time to update the clients to now use the DFS, and then migrate the content in the background and update the folder targets as I migrate the content. So it actually makes uh, that migration that much easier. Um, in 2008, we also support access-based enumeration, which means we only see the content we actually have permissions to. So that's really DFS namespaces in a nutshell. It's just a logical namespace that points to physical shares. So that, I mean, that, that's great. But I do have multiple copies of the data. At our most basic level, maybe I've got two locations. Each of those got a file server. And they each have a copy of a share. And my DFS namespace may have, I don't know, sales. And points to both of them. It has two folder targets. Well, I have content in this guy. I want it to be the same. I don't want users in one location to see one set of content and users in another location to see something completely different. So I need to keep them synchronized. Prior to 2003 R2, um, we could use the NT File Replication Service, NTFRS, but NTFRS is basically a file-based replication. So any change to the file, it has to replicate the entire file over again. Waste of bandwidth and not that efficient. So people actually wrote different things, maybe using RoboCopy, other technologies to actually replicate the data. In 2003 R2, Microsoft introduced um, Distributed File System Replication, DFSR. And DFSR actually replicates the data between replicas and it only replicates the changes to a file. So it uses Remote Differential Compression, RDC, to only replicate, if I, if I have a great big file, and only this little bit changed, all it replicates over, because the file's already on the other location, is that little bit. So that's the only change that actually gets made. I'll go and kill the dog in a second. Peter people are not really. Um, the other cool thing we have is this is compressed if it's over a certain size, I think 32K. If we're using Enterprise Edition on one of these replicas, we get cross file RDC. And what that means is, let's say I save this as a new file. Let's use a different color, let's be wild. 
I create a new file. And it's basically exactly the same as this guy. Except it's got this little bit of change data here and here. What Crossfile RDC does, it says, hey, I've got this new file. But you've already got some of the data that's in this file in this other file. So duplicate those bits from the file you already have. So it's copying it from a local copy. And then I'll just send you over the bits that are different. So I mean, that's huge. Imagine I had a 10 meg file and I did a save as and there's 20k of change. With that cross file, I'm only copying over that minimal amount of change, kilobytes of data, instead of megabytes. So that's a, a huge thing with DFSR. Is this now only copies the changes and why well, I can actually do cross file uh, remote differential compression. Um, these replicas, I don't have to link it to a DFS namespace. I can just create DFS, um, rep, DFSR, DFS replicas, totally separate from the DFS namespace. They work very, very well together. From management interface, I can create multiple link targets and set up a DFSR replica, but I don't have to. I could just have multiple locations on file systems and use DFSR to keep them in sync. Um, I can host in 2008R2 a replica on a failover cluster. That wasn't supported prior to 2008R2. Um, high availability was essentially I have multiple copies of the data, but that is now supported in, in a cluster environment. Um, other things. 2008 Windows uh, can actually now use DFSR for SysVol. So your domain controllers currently use the file replication service. Again, that file by file replication very inefficient. 2008, we can run a series of steps to actually migrate SysVol replication from NTFRS to DFSR to so get a far more efficient uh, replication. Another new feature in 2008 R2 is we can now create read only replicas. So let's say this location over here is a branch office. And because by default it will replicate multi master replication, uh, I've got all these files. And some user over here, uh, he's a loser, not that smart, he goes and deletes this file. Well, that deletion will replicate and delete it. So I would like a way for branch offices to actually be able to consume and view replicas without being able to change it. So I can now mark these as basically read-only. So data replicates to them, but they can't change it. No changes will be allowed. And this is actually very useful because DFS does not work well when a multi-write to one file scenario either. If I have users trying to write to the same file in multiple locations, last writer wins. It's not really designed for that kind of, kind of collaboration. That's where you want to use SharePoint. So this is very good for publishing data. So I've got one master copy and I'm publishing it out to multiple locations. Or conversely, I want to collect data from multiple locations into one location, for example, backup purposes. Um, that's really the main stuff I wanted to get across. I hope that was useful. I mean, DFS is a, a great technology. DFSR really takes it to that sort of next level. And uh, I hope it's useful for your environment. Thank you.